This is going to be 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 1 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. So, you see here that Christians can be ignorant when it comes to spiritual things. And Paul is about to educate them on spiritual gifts so that they won't stay ignorant on the subject. It's not wrong to be ignorant, you just don't want to stay ignorant. A Christian who never commits to learning the Bible will get to a point where he is willfully ignorant. And sadly, that's a lot of Christians because they have zero appetite for the Bible. But as, a, as former, former idol worshipers, the Corinthians had been blinded by idol worship, just like today a religious person can be blinded by their idols. In verse 2, it says, You know that ye were Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, even as ye were led. So, he says they were Gentiles. This is because in the body of Christ, when they got saved and put in the body of Christ, they are no longer Jew or Gentile. As it says in Galatians 3.28, There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. So before they were saved, they were carried away with idols. So when it comes to spiritual things, they are still a bit messed up. Because a lot of the things you did before you were saved, they'll, they'll, they'll stay with you and you'll still be confused by the world a little bit. But Christians today are many times carried away with idols themselves, whether it be their career, their everyday living, their car, fishing, hunting, or whatever else. Their life is filled with everything except anything that can cause them to grow in the grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And many times when I talk to older people and they have no knowledge of the Bible or any spiritual discernment, I think to myself, how can you have lived this long as a Christian and you know absolutely nothing about spiritual things? Just They're just as dumb as a lost man or worse about the Bible. But idols can stunt your spiritual growth and cause you to stay a spiritually ignorant baby Christian. Now, Paul is going to give them some spiritual instruction and cause them to understand. In verse 3, it says, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So this is a very simple truth. Anyone who doesn't teach Jesus is the Lord is not speaking of the Holy Ghost, but is rather a deceiver and an antichrist. Because if you turn over to 1 John chapter 4, verses 2 and 3, it says, Hereby know ye the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come. And now, and even now already, is it in the world. So, any time that you see someone who doesn't say that Jesus is the Lord, if they say that Jesus is not God, or if they say that Jesus is not God come in the flesh, then they have the spirit of Antichrist. What we believe as Christians is that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh. We believe Jesus is God in the flesh. Now, verse 3 again in 1 Corinthians 12, it says, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So when a person, a movie, a TV show, or a song speaks evil of the Lord Jesus Christ, your spiritual alarm should go off. And I think to myself, I need to separate myself from this person or whatever it is that's speaking bad about the Lord Jesus Christ. When a college professor, a news anchor, a talk show host, or a false teacher gets up and says that Jesus was just a good man, but that he wasn't God, you should have enough spiritual sense to know that that man is spiritually a blind fool. A Christian who is spiritually blind does not see anything wrong with watching a movie like The First Temptation of Christ. A spiritually blind Christian will not see anything wrong with a movie like Evan Almighty or a blasphemous movie like these Hollywood movies. 
Now, verse 4 in 1 Corinthians 12 says, Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. So the same Spirit as the one in verse 3, the Holy Spirit. Once again, another important lesson by Paul. He lets you know that if you have a gift, and the gift is of God, then it came from the same Spirit. The same Spirit as all the other gifts that are good. Now, verse 5, And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. So the differing gifts came from the same Lord and also the differing administrations. Look at the word administrations. If you take off the AD at the beginning, it reminds you of ministries. The Lord has different ministries. Also, verse 6 says, And there are diversities of operations, but is the same God which worketh all in all. So while the Lord has His people doing different things, it's the same God who is working in them if they are doing it for Him. Now verse 7, But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So the manifestation of the Spirit happens when a believer uses his gift for the glory of God, and this shows, us, shows the world that the Spirit that's in him is the Holy Spirit. But every Christian has a spiritual gift. If it is from the Lord, then all the gifts came from the Spirit of God. The gift is a manifestation of the Spirit. In other words, when someone sees the gift, it is made clear where the man got the gift. And this gift, the manifestation of the Spirit, is given to every man to profit with all. The gift benefits him so that he can be of profit to the Lord. The Lord works in you so that you can work outwardly. And the word withal in the verse means together or at the same time. So all the members of the body of Christ should work together as a whole. So, but when you look at Christians today, among Baptists, you have so many different little groups. And they all hate each other's guts. They have one ringleader at the top who is trying to set up a great Baptist kingdom here on earth with him at the head. But Colossians shows us that Jesus needs the preeminence and not Diotrephes. In Colossians 1.18 it says, And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So Jesus Christ needs the preeminence. You don't want to be like Diotrephes in 3 John 9 where it says, I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, receiveth us not. So you don't want to be like that guy. But we need to use our gifts to help the cause of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Paul is going to start talking about these spiritual gifts. In verse 8 it says, For to one is given the Spirit, for to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So you get wisdom and knowledge from reading the Scriptures. Someone who has spent a lot of time reading the Bible may have a lot of knowledge. But if God also gives him wisdom, then he'll be able to help someone in any kind of situation, he'll know how to use the knowledge because he will know how to, how to apply the facts that he's learned in his everyday life to the problems that he's going to see in his everyday life. He's going to have knowledge and wisdom. If someone has the word of wisdom, they can take the scriptures and help you with the situation you're in by applying the scriptures to whatever you're going through. But they have to know the scriptures first. That's why if you're a pastor or somebody, somebody like that, if somebody comes to you with a problem, you need to know the Bible well enough that you can take the Bible and show them what to do in that situation. Verse 8, it says, For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. So if someone has the word of knowledge, they have the ability to show you what the Scripture says. Have you ever been around someone who, ha who was able to give you an answer to almost any question that you had about the Bible? I've seen men do that, men like Bob Alexander. You ask him any question, he knows the answer. I've yet to see him not know the answer to a question, or if you watch those old question and answer sessions by Rugman, pretty much anything that they said, they asked, he knew the, the answer, even if it was just some off-the-wall question that they were saying just to see if they could get him to where he couldn't answer the question. But if someone has the word of knowledge, they have the ability to show you what the Scripture says. Now verse 9, To another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. If a man has faith, then the, ad the advice his wisdom and knowledge gives you will be a lot more powerful because you'll be able to see he believes what he's saying. 
the, his faith will make what he says much more real to you. We all are saved by faith. However, some have faith that goes beyond so that the Lord can use them to perform works that other Christians can't do just for the simple reason that they lack faith. Now, Romans 12, 3 says, The Lord hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. So we all have a little faith. We all had to have faith to be saved. But after you're saved, some Christians just have more faith than other Christians. And if you feel like you lack faith, then you need to pray that God will give you more faith. 1 Corinthians 13, 2 says, And though I have the gift of prophecy, and understand all mysteries, and all knowledge, and though I have all faith, so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. So Paul says he has all faith. So Paul is the example of a Christian who has more faith than most Christians. And then in uh, Matthew fourteen twenty nine through 31, it says, And he said, Come. And when Peter was come down out of the ship, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw the wind boisterous, he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried, saying, Lord, save me. And immediately... Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? So this implies the Lord would have given Peter the ability to walk on water longer with Jesus if he had more faith. But today we walk by faith and not by sight. So the Lord most likely isn't going to allow us to do the miracles as the disciples did or as the two witnesses will in the tribulation. But even in this age we are in today, when we have faith, that goes above and beyond. We have a gift, and God will use that gift and perform good works through us so that He can get glory because we willingly did what He told us to do. Now back to verse 9 in 1 Corinthians 12, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. The gifts of healing as the apostles had, it seems to have temporarily ceased, because when the Lord stopped dealing with the Jews, see, the Jews rejected Jesus Christ and the Lord turned to the Gentiles. It says in 1 Corinthians one twenty two that the Jews require a sign. They look for signs and miracles, like gifts of healing and tongues. So if you claim to have the gift of healing, then go right ahead and heal people. But I don't believe you have it. Uh, when Peter had it, his shadow passing over people could heal them. In Acts 5.15, Paul could heal with a handkerchief by sending out handkerchiefs to people. It says in Acts 19.12, So that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. And there weren't any misfires. The one being healed didn't need faith, but the one healing needed the faith. The modern day healing lines you see today is nothing but money making nonsense they're just trying to get people's money they're crooks they're crooked and if they have these this uh real healing like the apostles had it then why aren't they healing all the people of the coronavirus kenneth copeland supposedly got rid of the coronavirus it's still here you you know you still see see it going on you say well how can you just say the gift of wisdom and knowledge is for today but not healing in tongues well, because I'm rightly dividing according to 2 Timothy 2.15. You say, well, I'm going to take the whole thing and not just bits and pieces. Listen, no one truly takes the whole thing for themselves, and they shouldn't take the whole things for themselves. You can't just take the whole Bible for yourself. If you did, you'd be sacrificing an animal right now. But you don't do that because you have Jesus Christ, the perfect sacrifice. See, you rightly divide. You know those verses that talk about sacrificing an animal isn't for you today. So you, if you're honest, you don't take all the Bible and do it for yourself. So no one truly takes the whole things for, them, for themselves because not all of it is for you. The gifts of healing and tongues were for the apostles. The apostles had these gifts and these gifts were sign gifts that they performed because of unbelieving Jews. The Jews require a sign. You say, well, you're just slicing up the verses and you're not going to do like me and you're going to take all the gifts as for today. Okay, then why don't you do all the ones listed in Mark 
16. Look at Mark chapter 16, verses 17, 18. If you're going to tell me that you're going to do all the gifts, then I want you to do all the gifts in Mark 16, 17, and 18. It says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So, you see, nobody takes all the gifts for themselves today. I don't see you picking up serpents, and I don't see you drinking any deadly thing. So, don't sit here and tell me you're taking all the gifts for yourself. Now, verse 10 in 1 Corinthians 12 says, To another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So, the miracles were for the apostles. Acts 6, 8 says, And Stephen, full of faith and power, did great wonders and miracles among the people. So God performs miracles every day, but He's not causing men to perform the impossible in a visible, supernatural way as He did it with the apostles. The Lord Himself still performs miracles and does the impossible, but it's not as it was like the apostles did it. Now, you see that gift of, pro of prophecy. You have that at your disposal because you're able to tell someone what the Bible says about the future. You go up to someone and you tell them that if they trust the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, then they will go to heaven. That's prophesying. Now, when it comes to having the gift as men had it in the Bible, you don't have that today because God isn't communicating to us through dreams and visions, but through the Word itself. And Peter himself calls it a more sure word of prophecy. The Bible is a more sure word of prophecy. It's more sure and you can bank on it more because you have what God actually said, whereas in a vision, what's coming to you in a vision may not be the Holy Spirit. It could be an unclean spirit. So the Bible is a more sure word of prophecy. And any time that you say, talk about a future event from the Bible, you're prophesying because you're telling the future. Now, verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. So this gift of discerning of spirits, since you have been saved, have you had the ability to just look at something like a book or a movie or anything really, and something in you goes off like an alarm and says, that's not of God. That's another spirit and not the Holy Spirit. That is shows you have a gift of of discerning today christians lack spiritual discernment they think movies like the shack are of god they think music from lecrae is good christian music they may or may not own a christian ouija board which makes less sense than christian rock they have no discernment so verse 10, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. As I said, the gift of tongues as the apostles had it has temporarily ceased until God once again begins dealing with the Jews and the apostles in Acts 2 spoke and every man heard them in their own language. But the gift of tongues today that you see is, is not what the apostles were doing. The gift of tongues today could obviously refer to believers who have learned other languages and can speak more than one language so that they're able to minister to people of different languages. And then you have those who can interpret a sermon or something to someone of another language. But what people have today is not like the apostles had in Acts chapter 2. Now verse 11, But all these worketh that one and the self same spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. So all these gifts come from the same Spirit, and the Spirit gives them out to whom he wants, however he wants. Verse 12, For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. So the body of Christ compares to the human body. Your body is one body, but it has many members. It says in verse 13, For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So the moment you believed on Jesus Christ to be your Savior, 
Whether you knew it or not, you were baptized into the body of Christ, whether you were Jew or Gentile, whether you were bond or free. So being a Jew doesn't get you a pass into the body of Christ. You had to believe the gospel. And when you did, you were made to drink into one spirit. This is because Jesus Christ is the living water, as it calls him in John chapter 7, verse 38. Now, verse 14 in 1 Corinthians 12 says, For the body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, Because I am not of the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? So you have a hand and you have a foot. Both of them do things that the other one doesn't do. Imagine if you had to eat with your foot. Imagine if you had to always walk with your hands. Just like the body of Christ has many members, each member has a different job, talent, and purpose to serve God. You need all the members. Verse 16, And if the ear shall say, Because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? So you see, the ear can't say that since it doesn't do what the eye can do, that therefore it is not of the body. The eye can't hear, but the ear can hear. You need your ear and you need your eyes. Just like we don't need every... You can't just say that you don't need every member of the body. You need every member of your physical body. We need every member of the body of Christ. And we can't say any member of the body is of less importance. Because as verse 17 says, If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole body were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. So it is for his pleasure that we are and were created. God's doing it how it pleases him. As it says in Revelation 4.11, For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Now verse 19 in 1 Corinthians 12, And if they were all one member, where were the body? If the whole body was an ear, then it wouldn't be a body. It would just be a giant ear. We need every member to make up the body. So you, as insignificant as you feel, are just as important as the rest of the members in the body. And a lot of super spiritual Christians think that they are the most important part of the body, but they're not. Verse 20 and 21 says, But now are they many members, yet but one body, and the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet. I have no need of you. The I can't say to the hand that he doesn't need him. You need the ability to, to pick up what you see. The hand needs the eyes to determine where something is so that it can pick it up. So just like we need the rest of the members in the body of Christ, that's how we need all the members of our body. Verse 22, Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. Just like the gallbladder and the tonsils and all the other parts of the body, which people think they don't need, they're still needful in some way. There are parts of the body of Christ that men often look down and say, those aren't needful, but they are needful. If everyone in the body was a pastor or a teacher, then where would the students be? Verse 23, And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Your hair, for example, we think to be less honorable than our eyes. But do you spend more time in the morning on your hair or your, or your eyes? Verse 24, For our comely parts have no need, but God hath tempered the body together, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. So God gives more honor to the part that lacks, so that there be no schism in the body, that is, no division or separation. Verse 25 and 26, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. For example, when you stub your toe, you grab it with your hand and scream with your lungs and you jump up and down. All the members suffer with it. So when you see a member of the body of Christ suffering, you need to suffer with it. Verse 27, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. So you're part of the body if you're saved and an important member, no matter your job or your gift or your talent. And verse 28 through 30 says, and God hath set some in the church, first apostles, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues. Are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing. Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? The answer to these questions is no. Not everyone has the same gift. Not everyone has the same job. 
the tongue-speaking crowd, the charismatics will say, if you don't speak in tongues, then you don't have the Holy Ghost. But this verse plainly showed you that all won't speak with tongues. Yet according to this chapter, we are still all in the body. Also, tongues, as they spake at Pentecost in Acts 2, have temporarily ceased for today. We are operating by faith and not by sight, and the tongues are for a sign, because the Jews require a sign. And in the tribulation, the Lord goes back to dealing with the Jews, and that's why the sign gifts come back. But it says in verse 31, But covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show out unto you a more excellent way. The best gifts are prophecy and charity. As it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 1, Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts, but rather that ye may prophesy. When you prophesy today, it isn't from a dream or vision like men had in the Old Testament. It's from the Bible itself. For example, when you tell someone, believe the gospel and you're going to go to heaven when you die, that's prophesying. You're telling them their future about what will happen to them if they make the decision to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But you got it from the Bible. The Lord isn't giving men prophecies outside of the Scripture because we have the complete written Word of God. you got to watch out for all these people that you see on YouTube and on TV that are saying they got this vision or they had this dream today and God told them this specific thing, yet it's nowhere to be found in the Bible. That person is either crazy or they're lying because God doesn't operate that way right now. He's using the more sure word of prophecy, the Bible. And if what somebody says matches up with the Bible, then okay. But if they're just saying some off-the-wall stuff that doesn't even line up with the Bible, that shows you that it's a different spirit and they're being a false prophet. But this has been 1 Corinthians chapter 12.